Hello, my name is Christopher Lovejoy and I'm a junior doctor working in London and a clinical data scientist particularly interested in artificial intelligence. Now today I'm going to talk about how artificial intelligence might impact psychiatry. I want to start by saying that there's quite a bit of hype around artificial intelligence in general. So I think it's really important to take quite a critical look at what artificial intelligence is, how it could impact medicine, and really assess the kind of impact that it will have. You hear about artificial intelligence a lot in the media, both in very positive lights and very negative lights, when actually I think the most likely scenarios are somewhere in between. And it's useful to understand what the situation is in order to make those kinds of appraisals. It's worth pointing out that just because an algorithm works doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be clinically useful. You also have to think about how it could be incorporated into the existing clinical workflows. For example, if you made an AI which analyzes images and it gives lots of flags to the radiologist constantly saying we think we found this, we think we found this, uh, that's actually going to disrupt the radiologist, radiologist's process of analysing the images themselves and it's not actually going to have a positive clinical benefit. And another thing is that it's able to generalise to different populations because with artificial intelligence algorithms they're always trained on a particular population so you want to see does that generalise to a different population, maybe a different demographic of people geographically, different genetic backgrounds or different ethnicities or different genders. So that being said, I'm going to talk about some of the most interesting ways in which artificial intelligence could be used in psychiatry. So the first area is in diagnosis. And there's a number of cool tools that have been discussed and researched trying to look at how we might use artificial intelligence to diagnose certain psychiatric conditions. So one example of this is a group that used video recordings of children while they were growing up. And they found that the artificial intelligence algorithm could distinguish between children that had autism or children that would go on to develop autism and those who didn't. Similarly with children who had ADHD. Another group looked at using speech and they found that you could analyse speech and use that as a predictor of people who would go on to develop psychosis. The second area is in monitoring. And one thing that's cool about living right now is that everybody has smartphones and there's a huge amount of potential to use data that's collected by smartphones to monitor people, to monitor their health, and to find out clinically useful things. So for example, different groups have looked at different kinds of things that you can measure from your smartphone that can be used to monitor your mental health. That can be things such as how many people you text, the amount of distance that you cover as tracked by your phone, the number of phone calls you make, the variation in your speech as you make those phone calls, your speech rate, your speech volume, these are all things that can predict certain conditions such as depression. And then there's some cool ways that artificial intelligence can be used in treatment. One recent development is the use of chatbots to deliver CBT. CBT is cognitive behavioural therapy, which is one of the common treatments for a variety of conditions, including depression and anxiety. Traditionally, it was always delivered by a counsellor as a one-on-one -on -one session or a group session. Then in the 1990s, they developed online CBT that you could do, where you could go onto a computer and complete modules yourself and do it more as a self-study type thing. Whereas more recently, people have developed chatbots, which essentially mimics a conversation with a human, but it delivers these CBT principles. And some studies have shown that that's effective. But the key thing actually is that more people are using it. There's a greater adherence to people doing a CBT chatbot than there is when they're on the computer. And intuitively I think that makes sense because if you have your phone on you at all times and you're messaging friends, it's perhaps a natural extension of that to then message a CBT chatbot and just check in. It might ask you how you're doing and it might encourage you to reflect on different ways and the types of strategies that you might do based on uh, CBT principles. And one example of a chatbot that's been generated is by a group in Stanford, and that's called the Wobot, which is available through Facebook. But the exact use of CBT chatbots is unclear at the moment. One study found that it actually increased people's likeliness to take alcohol if they had alcohol dependence. And the suspected reason for that is because it increased the amount that they thought about drinking alcohol and therefore increased the cravings that they had. But other studies have shown that it has been effective in reducing depression and anxiety. And another way that AI could be used in psychiatry is to increase efficiency for clinicians. Psychiatrists spend a lot of time looking through past notes to kind of build up a picture of a patient's mental state and how it's changed over time. The AI might 
increases efficiency by automatically analyzing text and producing a summary report for the clinician. One type of artificial intelligence is natural language processing, and that analyzes text to find meaning. And it can do that instantly. So you could use a natural language processing algorithm to analyze large volumes of text about a patient and perhaps create a short report for the clinician to summarize the patient and how they've changed over time. Although we're not there yet with the technology in, in natural language processing and there's other tools as well that artificial intelligence could be used to generate that increased efficiency. So these are some of the interesting uses of artificial intelligence in psychiatry and there's likely to be new areas as well that haven't yet been thought of. Now there are certain concerns in, in psychiatry and in mental health when it comes to artificial intelligence and to technology more broadly. There is a concern about data protection and capacity and consent to data use. Now, mental health disorders can affect your capacity and that might affect your ability to consent to data storage. So there's certain questions that need to be considered. For example, someone might consent to data being collected initially via their smartphone, via passive monitoring. But then if they lose their capacity due to their mental health getting worse, is that prior consent still held valid or do they need to reconsent or should that data stop being collected? These are things that we need to think about now with these new technologies so that we can guide our actions for the future. There are also great things about artificial intelligence in general. Artificial intelligence is scalable. Once you develop one algorithm, that can then be used in large populations simultaneously, as long as that algorithm does generalize to different populations. For example, the CBT chatbots that I mentioned, that can be used by large populations. If you'd like to read a longer explanation, I wrote an article that was published in the European Psychiatry Journal, and I'll link that below. And I'll also link to the studies that I've mentioned, as well as some interesting blog posts and other sources. And I'll be making more videos like this and on similar subjects of artificial intelligence medicine. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you excited about artificial intelligence? Do you think it will have a big impact on medicine or not? Do you think it will be a positive impact or a negative impact? What are your thoughts about artificial intelligence in psychiatry? Is there anything else you'd like to add? That's all for today. Thanks for watching.